Thank you, Mr. President. And uh, it's a pleasure to speak in this debate. I want to congratulate uh, my fellow Instagram lover uh, at the moment for uh, Glasgow East for securing this debate. Uh, we have more in common than just posting uh, fun pictures. Um, <laughs> banks are a really important part of our communities. And when they close, they leave a hole in not only our high street, but also our, our community as well. And the reasons for that have been put out uh, considerably in this debate already. And I'm deeply concerned about Santander's decision to close uh, branches at the scale that they are proposing here. But uh, importantly, in the area that I represent, uh, their intent to close at the New George Street uh, uh, Santander Pair branch uh, on the 5th of December uh, this year, which is quite some Christmas present for their local customers uh, uh, that they are offering there, and not something good for the staff either in terms of losing their jobs just before uh, the festive season. Um, now, there, we'd like to think in Plymouth that we have a special connection with Santander because we're one only two places in the country where you can actually get a ferry to Santander <laughs> in, in order to do that. So to see the closure of, of Santander branches in Plymouth is deeply worrying and it's something that has not been lost on the good folk of Plymouth uh, about what that means. And I think there is something here about who we need to aim this debate at. And so predominantly the, the remarks that have been made by honourable members on both sides of the House have been focused at the banks. Yeah. But I want to focus many of my remarks actually at the government because I believe the banks have had a certain good kicking already and certainly my fellow Devon MP uh, from Tipton and Harton did a very good job of explaining why banks do deserve a good kicking at times. But I think we need to be really cautious about what can be done to reverse the decline in branches uh, on our high street to make sure that people are able to access the services that they need, being able to make sure that that personal touch is there. Because I believe there is something that's missing from this debate so far, and that is looking at what is the social purpose of banking. Banking, yes, has a financial purpose. It enables us to trade, to borrow, to invest, to save. But actually the social purpose of banking is also really important. It's about pooling risk. It's about coming together. It's about having access and someone to speak to in order to get advice on borrowing and investment and saving to make sure you're getting the best financial products. And that is something that diminishes hugely when the uh, branches close. Um, I'm a big fan of online banking. I'm a big fan of challenger banks. I really do like my hot coral Monzo card. It is something that I really like. I like the way that you can access financial services online and in many cases get a better and faster service than you can elsewhere. But I am not the same as everyone. And actually we need to have a market within our financial services that recognises that online banking and quick dynamic services in the modern age needs to sit alongside traditional high street banking that's fit for purpose and where we are. And there's no better example of that than on Muttley Plain in Plymouth. Now, I use Muttley Plain as an example because I know the minister, before he found his, uh, his uh, current seat, uh, was a candidate, a Conservative candidate in <coughs> Plymouth. So he'll know Muttley Plain well. Muttley Plain, when he was a candidate there, was full of banks. It now has hardly any banks left. We've seen HSBC, Halifax, Lloyds, Barclays, NatWest all leave Muttley Plain, effectively leaving that entire community without banking services. But not only has it left without the ability to access a cash machine or to get advice, uh, it's left people without the ability to go in and speak to someone about it, which is why I think it's really important that we look at the importance of local banks and local services. And that's the social purpose that I think the banks need to rediscover, because it's not sufficient to have social purpose in your PR and your marketing if that social purpose doesn't extend from the communications department through to the boardroom and the banks and, and branches themselves. Happy to give way. Thank the Honourable Gentleman for giving way. Uh, he's making a very, uh, very poignant and strong speech. Um, would, I agree, couldn't agree with him more on this point about actually spending social funds, uh, actually corporate social responsibility funds, actually supporting the communities and customers these banks are meant to serve. So does he agree with me that they should spend less money on fancy advertising and sports sponsorship and more money in keeping branches open in rural and deprived urban areas? Well, I, I think that is certainly a suggestion, and I'm grateful for that intervention, that we should ask the ministers to look at. Because in relation to what encouragement can be given, yes, we have, the, well, the government has the power of regulation in terms of legislation, but they have very, very strong soft power in terms of encouraging the banks to do the right thing. And actually, we need to recognise that customers, each of us as a customer of a bank, and the people we represent also have soft power about where we choose to bank, who we choose to bank with. And I think it is really important that when we're talking about what options are available to us, that we recognise that the post office is an option, but only when you have a post office. 
And equally, internet banking is only an option when you have the internet. Now, there is an assumption that sometimes in this place that everyone has access to the internet. That is not true. In places like Plymouth, where we have high levels of poverty and, de and deprivation, not everyone does have access to the internet. Not everyone has a mobile phone with data allowance. That means they can actually access that data. And with the closure of libraries that we've seen in recent years, it means that the free access provisions that are in the library services are not always available as well. So if the post office network and the library network for accessing those services is to be a genuine and meaningful alternative, we need to make sure that it can be accessed by people along the way because we mustn't fall into this middle class trap that think everyone has the same as those people uh, who largely populate the House of Commons. That is certainly not true in Plymouth, and it is something that we need to address. Um, I asked people on my Facebook uh, page uh, a few days ago about what the experiences are of banks closing. And in many cases, the most powerful testimonies come from those people with disabilities, yeah. Yeah. for whom the ability to access a local banking service is not just a, a part that they should have as a normal human being, mm. but actually the additional support that they, uh, in many cases, uh, need and deserve to access those services can't be provided by someone at the end of a phone or someone at, or on a few clicks away on the internet. You need to have a real human being to interact with. And that was the case for so many people that spoke to me and gave me their stories about where we go to. And that's why I turn back to the minister about where do we go from here? Because I think there is a real genuine risk that whole communities will lose access to banking services because progressively banks close. And today's this debate is about the decisions of Santander. But a few months ago, it might have been about other banks. And in a few months time, it will probably be about other financial service providers as well. But then we need to look at what is that safety net? What is that minimum guarantee that government believes that we should have? What is that safety net? And actually, the idea that came uh, in relation to banking hubs is a good one. And in Plymouth, we're doing something very similar in terms of uh, health and wellbeing services, bringing together city centre hubs for all those aspects of the public estate who need a front door in the city centre. It is something that I hope the Department of Health funds, but that principle applies to financial services just as it does apply to dentistry, GP services, sexual health and mental health provision. And that's what we have to look at. And I think there is an element here when we're looking at hub services. It's about what we do with those empty buildings. My, my, my uh, humble friend who spoke before me uh, talked about the empty buildings. But in many cases, the buildings that are being left vacant by these banks still have an ongoing lease. They are still paying for the lease of these buildings. And I think there should be questions about what is the social purpose of an empty building in relation to this? And how can we make sure that those empty buildings, just as we as parliamentarians have put an extra pressure on empty homes, put pressure on empty buildings where there's an ongoing lease to rediscover that social purpose that goes along with that as well. Um, the post office network has also been raised, and it reminded me of a visit that I made to the Efford Road post office in Compton Ward in the area that I represent uh, just before Christmas, where I spoke to uh, Michael Zeng, who is the uh, postmaster of that small but well-loved post office. And he was describing that since the banks locally have closed, he is taking on the financial transactions for local shops. And so he is having huge amounts of cash deposited with him. But what has changed recently is the contract for local post offices for processing cash transactions, meaning in many cases it's not viable for him as an employer to pay someone to spend the time processing the, uh, the cash in and out and the banking services for local businesses because the post office agreements between him as a local business and the post office no longer applies and makes that worthwhile. And that is something that needs to be looked at as well. The health of our high street depends not only on shops where people want to spend their money, banks where they can access their money, borrow and save, a culture where people can enjoy, shops and restaurants where they can eat and drink. We need to look at how we repurpose all that high street in terms of this. But I say to the Minister, there are regulatory protections that I think do deserve looking at here because we are not in a normal time for Conservative Party thinking in respect of allowing the free market to do its thing on high streets, come and go as they please in terms of financial services. We are now seeing the financial exclusion, the forced financial exclusion of people in our communities because the banks are exiting their high street presence. And I think that demands a different approach than we've had in the past. And I think we need to do that before we get to the point where we are losing banks entirely from our high street. But there are alternatives. And just very finally, um, there are models about people investing in our high streets. And I want to talk in particular about the Southwest Mutual, a cooperative forming in uh, the four counties of the far southwest to provide high street banking services on a mutual model. 
just as those big financial businesses, those multinational banking giants, are exiting our high streets. It's in many cases the small uh, mutuals, those people with social purpose that are coming and to replace them. And I commend the work that the Southwest Mutual are doing. I love it when they said, we believe that bank managers know their communities well, make the best lending decisions, and we are committed to providing bank, branch, uh, bank branching facilities uh, where you can choose how you want to bank. I think that is precisely the type of ethos that we need to see lived and breathed by our high street banks, those big financial giants, not just those mutuals. Because if I keep seeing TV adverts from big banks telling me just how much they care about me yeah. and care about our communities, as at the same time as they close our banks, yeah. I think there'll be more people exiting the custom with those banks, and rightly so, because we deserve better, they deserve better, our high streets and our communities deserve better than the, uh, the posh PR, the plush PR, the high PR spend that is trying to tell us something different from the lived experience for far too many in our community. Thank you.